What's up guys, Standard Lifestyle, we're gonna jump back into the low buck diesel truck. If you watched the last episode, you know that we went from a dash install to starting a roll cage. The dash swap I planned wasn't going to work, so I decided to build a roll cage that I could just build a dash into as part of the cage. Now I've got some seats, I've got some tube, and I've got some fresh ideas. using NHRA regulations in order to get an idea of how to design a safe cage, but this won't be built to pass tech inspections. This cage will function for basic safety, but it's more for flair than anything else. Integrating the dash into the cage I think will gain us some extra cool points, but a lot of what you see today will be for functionality, not necessarily for safety. This cage is going to be design build, meaning that I'm designing it as I go along today. I'm a big fan of this style of building because I'm a lot more creative whenever I build on the fly. I bought way more tube than I need because I'm going to have some hiccups here and there, and I want to have the option to rebend something instead of forcing myself to make something work when I know that there could be a better way to do it. A few things have changed since the last video. Now I'm going to weld all of this in cab. I'm gonna paint all of this in cab. If you watched the last video, you saw me talk about how I wanted to unbolt all of this and be able to take it out piece by piece. Um, it's gonna be complicated. It's also gonna be a little bit more expensive to buy the couplings and stuff like that. So I said, screw it. We're just gonna do it the traditional way, which is where you weld it all in cab, you paint it all in cab. This is how most people do it. And this isn't a show truck or anything like that. So it's okay if <laughs> the paint's not pretty because I didn't paint it all outside of the cab. So what I did is, I before we're starting this video, I wanted to take care of the low hanging fruit. I welded in the seat belt bar because I knew it was gonna be difficult to get the welder behind there. Um, I welded in these bottom plates here, and this back hoop is pretty much ready to go. I just located it, and the next thing I wanna work on is coping the edge of these tubes right here. So on the last video, I basically just tacked everything together so I could kind of just see what the concept was gonna look like. But now I wanna go through and start to finish weld some of this stuff. I'm gonna protect this back window with a welding blanket and I want to cope the edges of this and then we're gonna take a hammer and we're gonna bang in the bottom, we're gonna bang in the top and we're gonna make sure that this is all nice and tight so it makes it easy for us to finish weld. this halo bar all fabbed up and now I am ready to work on our dash section so I see three pieces of tube here I see one going straight across from basically here all the way across to the other side and then I want to this this next one's gonna be a really complex shape I'm not exactly sure how to accomplish it yet but I'm gonna be using a combination of a tubing bender and a tubing roller so I want to have a piece that's gonna follow this and unfortunately it's not a uniform roll that I'll need. I'll need a roll here and then it straightens out a little bit and then a roll on the other side and then I'm gonna have to use the bender and I'm gonna have to bend it to contact this other piece. And then what I wanna do is put a panel, just a bolt-on panel that's gonna go across and it's gonna lay flat on this piece of tube and this piece of tube. And then the third piece of tube we're gonna install shouldn't be too bad, it'll be two bends, um, but it's basically gonna run underneath the steering wheel and then I'll have a flat piece of, like a flat panel that's gonna bolt on, that's gonna go all the way across um, to where we can mount like our dashes and switches and all that stuff. So it'll be two removable panels, three pieces of tube, and a whole lot of trickery trying to get all these bends to work. This is gonna be the trickiest bend of the entire thing. So I wanna be very clear about what I'm doing here. If you look at the line on the front of this dash, it, the middle third has like a certain bend and then the outer thirds of each side, gets a, it gets a lot faster, it's a lot steeper bend. So the way I have this piece of tube bent right now is to match that inner third and that what I'm gonna to try to do next is match these two bends on the outer third. I marked a center mark where the, the center of the tube meets up with the center of the dash. I'm, I've marked where I think the bend needs to get faster and I've done that on each side. So now what I'm gonna do is basically the mark where I think the bend gets faster, I'm just going to roll it from here out 
And what's nice about this Swag Off-Road roller is it has this digital readout, and this digital readout will be able to show exactly how much, how far the jack inside the machine has been extended. And if I match that number on the other side, then it should be identical on both sides. This is gonna get really tricky, and I might have to do, the, you know, use up a couple sticks of this tube in order to get it right, but these are the kinds of details that I nerd out on. That was pretty time consuming and a little bit tricky, but I was able to do it all in one shot. Uh, there is a lot of funky angles here, but I think that overall it looks the way I wanted it to. I'm, I'm happy with it. Happy enough to at least move on to the next step. So the next step is gonna be adding a straight bar across here. I'm basically just gonna go from one joint to the other joint. Should be relatively simple. And then we're gonna build a bar that's gonna go underneath the dash. And then later on when we actually build the dash, will hopefully have flat enough mounting surfaces that we can come up with some really cool panels. If you're building a cage from scratch, I highly recommend that you reference the NHRA drag spec and the Ultra 4 spec whenever you're designing it. I think that we don't necessarily need to adhere perfectly to these guidelines, but there's great nuggets of information to make sure that this aesthetic cage can also meet some basic safety requirements. And at the end of the day, some cage is definitely better than no cage in my opinion. Plan is changing a little bit. When I was welding this upper bar in, I had some moments of inspiration and I decided not to do it as simple as I initially planned. Initially, I was gonna run a bar along the bottom here and then I was basically just gonna run a flat sheet from the top bar to the bottom bar. Just be it super simple, put some gauges in it, um, just do some basic things like that. But now I think I'm gonna challenge myself as a fabricator and I'm gonna put a whole bunch of complex bends and different things like that with a metal break and just not run a lower bar at all. So we're gonna table this for the next video or you know, some video in the future whenever I do the dash and I do all the instrument cluster. But for now, we've gotta mount some seats. So we're going to run a bar from the cage here, back to the cage there, and then we're gonna run two bars that are gonna go from this side to that side. I'm gonna to have to go over the hump. There's gonna be some complex bends and whatnot. And we're gonna mount our seats to the cage. The seats we're using today are from a brand called PRP. And like I said in the last video, I wanna run bucket seats instead of a bench just because I like the look and feel of a bucket seat. Brand new seats completely change an interior and these seats are way less expensive than people realize. You can design your own seat at PRP's website for 329 bucks. This is a custom seat that has all the colors and tastes that you prefer. I have seen used bucket seats for a thousand bucks on Craigslist, so 329 is a steal. For this build, I wanted to keep the color scheme very simple, all black with blue stitching to accent the color of the truck. If you've watched my channel before, I'm sure you've noticed, I like to build with blocks of wood. Helps to hold things up whenever you need to fabricate. And I just tried some different sizes real quick and I got these seats to where they're exactly the height that I want them right here. So now I can take some basic measurements and start to figure out exactly where to run this tube. The rear bar was easy, it was just a straight piece, went straight across, not a big deal. Now we have a piece that needs to go in front of the seats and I'm gonna have to get over the hump. Now instead of putting four bends in one bar, it's real easy to get things tweaked one way or another just a little bit. So I decided to just do two separate sections. We're gonna trim to fit. Um, I've got two bends, two 35 degree bends on this side, two 35 degree bends on the other side, and I've got some material that fits perfectly inside of this tube. So. I'm gonna kinda lay things out where I think it makes sense. I'm gonna make some marks, I'm gonna make some cuts, I'm gonna weld this sleeve in. Once 
Let's take a second to talk about tooling. You've been seeing me use this notcher throughout the video and this is a great tool and it's very inexpensive, but you don't have to have it. If, you, if you're looking at this project and you're seeing, oh, well, Nate's using all, this, all these expensive tools, you don't have to have the expensive ones. You can really get away with this project with, I mean, a basic tubing bender. You don't have to have as nice a one as I do. And you can just use like an angle grinder and a welder. So these other tools are great. They save a lot of time. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this one for the world. <laughs> the Porta Band is like my favorite tool in the shop. And I really like this Evolution Power Saw, but you don't have to have them. So if you want to try and attempt a project like this and you don't have really nice tooling, rely more on your creativity. I've been building projects like this since way before I had a 2000 square foot shop and way before I had all this nice equipment. As you can see, our decorative cage is almost done. I think that this front little hoop turned out pretty nice. I mean, there's, you know, I could have left that seam in there, but again, I'm a stickler for details. So I took the time, I buffed out that seam, and I think that it looks much better. And once it's all painted, you'll never even know it's there. You're not allowed to do that. If you if you want to pass some sort of like a tech inspection, if they find that, you're going to fail. They, they would never find this, but you're not allowed to do that. You're supposed to um, leave all your welds and everything so they can inspect them. But this is decorative, like I said at the beginning of the video. I want to make sure that things look and feel professional, at least as professional as I can produce. And to me, this is one of those details that's worth the time. So now we're going to mount the seats. I've got some ideas of how to do this. There's some little loops that are on the bottom of the seats. And I think I'm just going to use some flat bar going from the front to the back. Uh, I'll just drill some holes. I'm not gonna put these on any sort of sliding brackets because I mean, I'm gonna push them both all the way back, which is gonna fit me great on the driver's seat. I'm not worried about anybody else driving it, just me. And then the passenger, why would they want to slide forward to lose leg room? truck's got seats and it looks way better with a couple of seats in here. This is a very incomplete interior, clearly. There's a lot more work that needs to be done, but I think that we checked something huge off our list. I like the way that this cage turned out. I think that it looks good in here. I think that it's practical. It's not over the top and it's it, nothing is in the way. I'm not making any sacrifices by having a cage. So I'm pretty happy. I, I think that this turned out really cool. This really is a budget way to completely transform an interior is to add a cage and a couple of brand new bucket seats. But there is a lot more work that needs to go into this. I'm gonna be building a full dash from scratch. You're gonna see me building door panels from scratch. We're gonna address this floor. So if you follow me on this channel, you're gonna see a whole bunch more interior mods on this truck. I don't wanna be getting asked about seat belts. So this is what I'm gonna be using right here. PRP four point seat belt. Thing's pretty nice. I'm obviously not gonna be installing it for a little while, so I wanted to show you now. My favorite feature, and what I wish I had my TJ, it's just a traditional belt, latch, mechanism, buckle, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> this is awesome. So this is what we're gonna be using in this truck. I think that it's gonna match the work we've done so far perfectly. I think the blue is gonna look good with the truck. So I'm excited to get these installed in the future video. If you like what you saw and you wanna see more, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of content like this on here and I've got a whole bunch more on the way. If you wanna help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We've got t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, bunch of stuff like that, even stickers. And there's a link to our Patreon account on there if you wanna support that way as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.